could not believe my ears when I saw the video of Keir Starmer today attacking the Bangladeshi community. Not once, but twice. They will go back to the countries where people come from. That's what used to happen. Where? People coming from countries like Bangladesh are not being removed. People coming from countries like Bangladesh are not being removed. He attacked them by name. What did the Bangladeshis do? Other than loyally support Labour. Generation after generation. Only to see themselves on TV being spoken about as if they were illegal aliens arriving on the beach on the south coast. The Bengalis are the hardest working people in Britain, working till two o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning they get home. They've built a multi-billion pound industry in Britain. They've made more contribution to the economy of Britain, head for head, of any population in Britain, and then they're getting attacked. Keir Starmer committed political suicide with the Bengali community in his statements yesterday. When Britain arrived in Bengal, it was the richest place in the world. When Britain left Bengal, it was the poorest place in the world. You don't have to be Einstein to work out what happened in between. The British owe the people of Bangladesh big time. And the fact that instead of repaying that loyalty, they were subjected to that foul racial attack. At a time when the people of Bangladesh are being attacked by political candidates in the United Kingdom, let's learn a little about the history they failed to teach us in schools. In 1943, during World War II, Bengal, modern-day Bangladesh and Eastern India, which was part of British India at the time, suffered one of the worst famines in history. What makes this famine unique is the fact that it was not caused by drought or flooding. It was a man-made famine sparked by greed and racism. Whilst the world was fighting to save the European Jews, of which around 6 million were reported to have died, 3.8 million people were left to slowly die in the streets of Bengal due to starvation caused by the decisions of British Prime Minister and national hero Winston Churchill. It is also important to note that millions of Indians, Bengalis and Pakistanis participated in World War I and World War II they were forced to participate as they were under British rule. Thousands of the British soldiers that died were in fact from the British Commonwealth countries. Britain, under Prime Minister Winston Churchill, was caught up in World War II and was focused on feeding its army. Food grains from India were diverted to feed British troops, leading to crippling shortages in India. Churchill couldn't have cared less. He himself said, I hate Indians. They are a beastly people with a beastly religion. I am strongly in favor of using poisonous gas against uncivilized tribes. Wartime inflation, speculative buying, panic hoarding and preferential distribution made matters worse for the starving millions in Bengal. The transportation of rice took a blow as the British ordered the destruction of rural boats in anticipation of a Japanese invasion via the Eastern Bengal border. As the Japanese were occupying Burma at the time, modern day Myanmar, Churchill was severely criticized for his handling of the catastrophe. He was so callous that he said, if food is so scarce, why hasn't Gandhi died yet? The famine destroyed the social fabric of Bengal and its impact was felt for decades. Families were torn apart, many sold their small holdings, and millions of homeless migrants headed to cities in search of relief and work. The Bengal famine is remembered as one of the most shameful chapters in the history of the British Empire in India. It is undoubted that the British, disillusioned as they were by their racial superiority, tried to dominate over the local people. The most affected region was Kolkata and the state, Bengal, 
apart from, of course, Africa. Winston Churchill is primarily to be blamed for this famine since his obsessive and ignorant acts gave rise to laws like rice denial, which was the root of the famine followed by environmental reasons. These ultimately led to nearly 5 million deaths in Bengal alone and a few hundred thousand more in states that benefited from Bengal. British ministers knew all too well that the famine was starting, but they willfully obstructed any attempts to save the people, trying to show them the downside of trying to revolt against the masters or the Raj, putting on the cloak of reasoning stating that they needed the rice as ration for the ongoing war. Many texts and papers were written on this, none of which made it into British journals, and the entire episode was hidden from their public, not that their public were concerned to know, but their academic circles too were blinded to such a holocaust. Hence this famine never really made it into British history textbooks, but picking up any preliminary textbook written by Indian authors will provide the extent and brutality of this famine, and will also provide considerable proof for it to be considered as a more than valid source. Did you know, people used to eat from the side of the streets and the small plants that grew near drains just for nourishment. Yet, the British remained unmoved. No country, be it the United Kingdom, the USA, or France, will teach their school-going population of misdeeds they committed. Everyone has an image they would rather not break, the only country that rises up and takes responsibility for its actions is Germany. Germans are taught and come to terms with their gruesome history. You will never find France teaching the Treaty of Versailles and its impact on the German mark or the genocide they committed in Algeria, so why will the British teach their students of their crimes? The British have committed too many sins to be considered manageable. It is approximated that the torture imposed by the British Empire alone is the cause for more than 80 million deaths. To put that in context, the Holocaust in Germany killed 11 million people. The British looted and extracted over $45 trillion worth of resources from their time occupying India from 1757 to 1947. India was also described as the jewel in the crown for it was certainly the most important territory in the empire in the late 19th century. It underpinned the British economy, and the Indian army played a crucial part in defending the empire throughout the world. So for British politicians, both on the right and left wing, to be treating the people that contributed so much to them in such an ungrateful and disrespectful way makes no sense whatsoever.